the Australian Open, the first Grand Slam of the year and one of the most used comment that I'm getting. How on earth are they hitting the ball that hard? Well, in addition to be absolute physical beasts, the pros are doing a few things that honestly, I think anybody, regardless of level, can do. And I'm going to show you in this video what you can do to hit the ball with a little bit more pop. So here's what most club players do when they want to hit harder. They are using ugh, only the arm. They're just going to start wailing on the ball. And yeah, you might make one or two balls, but you're not going to be able to control that. So what do you want to do instead? Use the biggest muscle you have, which sort of is your entire body. <laughs> and that is really key. Get your entire body into the shot. If you can get your body weight into the ball, it doesn't matter whether you're super strong or not, you will increase your power. And by using your entire body, you'll actually also be able to control that instead of just kind of throwing your arm out and just wailing at the ball. And that is really the reason using the entire body why people like Ash Barty at 5'5", or Diego Schwartzman at 5'7", can launch absolute rockets. Here's where I think a lot of misunderstandings come from. When I'm saying the pros or really good players, good players, are moving forward, that does not mean that they never back up. That actually is not true. The pros or really good players are covering an immense area from, yes, all the way inside the baseline to, well, almost back to the back fence. If you're watching Rafa return, he's, yeah, this court wouldn't be big enough. You want to be in a position that you can move back, but then on each individual ball, you have enough time and balance, of course, to move back. And you don't really see pro players falling off shots. You do see them move back and you do see them almost hitting in a backward motion. But what they do is they lift, they're rarely ever hitting and then land back here. You're absorbing and I'm still staying on that spot here. So I'm still balanced. First thing, start further back. It's as simple as that. Yes, you do see, of course, pro players playing a ball on the baseline or inside the court, but you don't see them recovering to here. You will most likely see them recovering to here, depending on the surface, depending on the player that they're playing. So by just simply starting back, you're allowing yourself to move up to a lot more balls and that way you get the body weight into the ball. Yeah, yeah, I know you're going to say, but I'm so far back, they're going to drop shot me. Number one, your opponent first has to recognize that you have a deeper court position. And to my mind, that's okay. Let them drop shot. Let them hit a shot that they're most likely not very comfortable with hitting all the time. Second, by being a little further back, and then coming forward again, getting your body weight into the ball, you're hitting better quality shots. That's the whole point. And it's gonna be incredibly difficult for them then to hit a drop shot off a more aggressive ball. So if you do start on a position that's further back, again, always easier to move forward. You're faster, more balanced moving forward. Make sure that you recover back behind the baseline. So you're happy you moved up to the ball and then you get stuck here. Move back, recover. It's a constant up back movement. And of course, if somebody consistently hits the ball short, that is when you correct your court position. That is when you can come closer to baseline and still move into the ball, get your body weight into the ball, but then recover again behind the baseline or wherever your initial position is. The next thing that enables you to hit the ball harder with more control is that you're not getting to the ball in just a lateral way. You want to make sure that you're getting up to that ball at an angle at least. Again, this has to do with the court position. If I'm here and I get a wide ball, I'm right at the baseline, there's really no time for me to move in and intercept that ball, cut that angle off. So I'm back here and this is what, one, one and a half, two racket legs. It's not major. I'm not all the way back here. Here, this court position, 
allows me to come at the ball with an angle. Watch this clip here by Joel Myers. He's a fantastic coach. You should follow him on Instagram. He's explaining why a seemingly very simple drill is actually not that easy. So we're getting Grigor Dimitrov here doing a basket drill with his coach. And a lot of people look at this and probably go, this is such a simple drill, what's he working on? But if you notice every time that the coach feeds it, Dimitrov moves up inside the court. He's taking time away from his opponent. Alrighty, so we're just gonna replicate that drill. I'm gonna do it with my ball machine. You can do it with somebody just hand tossing the balls. You can shadow it. Again, not having a coach doesn't mean that you can't work on these things. One more drill. And again, you can just shadow that. You can have somebody feed that to you, but this is a really great drill for that constant up back movement. Make sure that you recover back over the center of the court and make sure you split step. I hated this drill. If you want to get more details on hit with more power, stability, balance, and of course control, stay tuned for next week's video because I'm going to share a secret with you that really nobody ever talks about. And it's one of the major things that will help you get a lot better.